This is Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Recently, she made headlines by claiming that she wanted to raise the top marginal tax rate to 70%. But once you get to like the tippy tops, uh, on your 10 millionth dollar, uh, sometimes you see tax rates as high as 60 or 70%. The tippy tops. Millionaires would have to pay higher taxes. But what about everyone else? How would all of the tax rates change? Senator Bernie Sanders, a democratic socialist just like AOC, released a tax proposal during his first presidential campaign that would have significantly raised taxes to pay for things like Medicare for All and free college for all. Similarly, the Congresswoman wants free health care for all and a federal jobs guarantee. She's been throwing around the idea of a 70% top tax rate, so it makes sense that she may have at least considered what tax rates would look like across the board. But I don't like to make assumptions, so while I was making this video, I sent an email to the Congresswoman's press office requesting some insight. Does the Congresswoman have thought as to what the federal income tax brackets would look like outside of the 70% top tax rate? Would additional tax brackets be added, or is this a work in progress to be revealed in the near future? Now, I expected one of three things to happen. I wouldn't get a response, I would get a response saying no comment, or I would get a reply saying that she was hypothetically speaking and that the Congresswoman didn't have a plan beyond that. Instead, none of those things happened and I actually got a reply. What outlet are you with? What outlet are you with? It shouldn't matter who I'm working for. You either have an answer to the question or you don't. So when I replied that I was a freelancer, which technically I am, I got this response. Andrew, thank you so much for reaching out. The representative's office is working to balance our legislative priorities, the needs of constituents, activists and advocacy groups, and requests from members of the press. The Congresswoman's current commitments have filled her calendar. Therefore, we aren't able to take on any additional media press projects at this time. Feel free to reach out later in the year if you are still interested. Corbin Trent, Communications Director. Pretty sure that if I lied and said I was with The Guardian or Vox.com, I would have been treated a little better. But it's probably not a good idea to lie to a federal official. <laughs> but okay, sure. I get that the Congresswoman's calendar is full. I mean, she's a very important person. So let's see what she does have time for. On a scale of zero to some, how many do you give? I think it's um, zero. <laughs> so important. My name is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I am the Congresswoman for New York's 14th Congressional District. Oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah. I committed yeah, so much voter fraud, fraud for you. I never owned an N64, though I do think it's probably the best system out of all of them. Wrong. Everyone knows that the best system of all time is the Soldier Boy console. For the last, I think, 10 years, if not more, we've seen all this this kind of evangelization of technology and to say if it's an app, it's good. If it's right. this new thing, it's good. Right. And we don't realize that our best and brightest are going to making things like Angry Birds instead of serving in NASA. Hmm. So what she's saying is that the creators of Angry Birds should have done the more noble thing and joined NASA, which is odd considering that they're from Finland. But if someone wants to use C++ to make an app instead of programming a satellite, who the hell is she to judge? And so it's basically like there's scientific consensus that the lives of children are going to be very difficult. And it does lead, I think, young people to have a legitimate question. You know, should, is it okay to still have children? You know, if you're dumb enough to think that the world is going to end in 12 years, you shouldn't be having kids anyway. And if she cared so much about the environment, she'd be composting. Not to mention that she should be jumping on the subway instead of hiring a minivan that only gets 17 miles per gallon. In response to this criticism, she tweeted, I also fly and use AC. Living in the world as it is isn't an argument against working towards a better future. So what she's saying is that even though there are more environmentally friendly options, it's okay for her not to use them because she's living in the world as it is. What about them? They're not doing it. What about them? They're not doing it. Why should we? We should do it because we should lead. So much for practicing what you preach, huh? 
If you want to help lower emissions, Congresswoman, lead by example. The water in Flint is still dirty. The water in Flint is still dirty. Okay, time to get really serious. She's referring to the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. In 2014, in an effort to save money, the city of Flint switched their water source from Lake Huron and the Detroit River to the Flint River. And thanks to insufficient water treatment, lead leached from the lead water pipes into the drinking water, exposing over 100,000 residents. A state of emergency was declared, and Michigan and the federal government mobilized and spent hundreds of millions of dollars to fix it. And according to reports from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, lead levels have been well below the acceptable federal standard since at least March 2017 and has only gotten better since. And the results from the MDEQ are consistent with findings from both the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Michigan State and the Flint Water Study Team from Virginia Tech, which helped identify the problem in the first place. So in summary, the water is A-OK. -okay. But instead, an elected official erroneously claims that the water's still dirty without any explanation or proof. Not irresponsible at all. People are still getting ringworm because they don't have access to public health mm -hmm. is wrong. Mm -hmm. Ringworm is the fungal skin infection that causes jock itch and athlete's foot. Neither have anything to do with lack of public health, nor are they even remotely life-threatening, so I have no idea what she's talking about. She probably meant hookworm. <laughs> she's confusing ringworm with hookworm. As seen in a Vice News report, it's not that people are getting hookworm because of lack of public health, they are getting hookworm because the residents in poor communities like Lawns County, Alabama, are too poor to properly maintain their own private septic systems or afford to replace ones that are broken. One used PVC piping to discharge raw sewage on the ground nearby. You see, totally the government's fault. Deer don't walk run productions. Those who can't teach. Those who can't teach criticize. Your time would be far better spent finding a solution to very real problems. At least she is trying to raise awareness for some real problems, and she's been elected. Actually, I do have a solution, and we need not look further than the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Every year, recipients spend hundreds of millions of dollars on junk food with food stamps. In 2016, $357.7 million in SNAP funds were spent on soft drinks, $199.3 million on bag snacks, $138.2 million spent on candy, $86 million spent on ice cream, $76.2 million on cookies, and $68.2 million on cakes. That's a total of $927.6 million taxpayer dollars that could be put to better use, including going towards the goal of eradicating hookworm. Now, I don't think that it's the federal government's responsibility to replace or upgrade septic tanks in private residences, but I'd rather see my federal tax dollars go towards that than nearly a billion dollars worth of soda and snacks. Anyway, back to the tax rate question. In my video, I asked you guys to reach out to the Congresswoman with the hashtag AllTaxRatesAOC, and a lot of you did. So proud of you guys. Thanks to all of you for taking the time to do it. Well, not this guy. He can f off. And to the surprise of no one, she never responded to any of your tweets or answered your questions. I guess other things take priority. I mean, why answer a policy question when you can eat ice cream instead? Thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Check out the links in the description and, um, Thanks again for watching. I, I hope to see you next time. I like how you stand in front of a brick wall with a Nintendo shirt on. Are you a reporter or some kid in his mommy's basement? You can make fun of me all you want, but leave the wall out of this. So since you are so dope at numbers, why are you making YouTube videos and she is a congressional representative? Maybe I'm boosting my profile on YouTube so I have a better shot at winning when I run for office. <laughs>